What's up? Welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do a full highlight on somebody who has short hair. I know a lot of times it can be hard to get that back section, so I'm gonna show you guys my step-by-step -step method, how to get all of those pieces covered, and to make it really, really easy on you. So stay tuned. a really fun one it's actually my mom's hair again and if you haven't seen our other YouTube video where I did her hair I go a little bit more in depth in that video so I'll link it in the description below but today we're gonna be doing a full highlight and I know sometimes when you're doing short hair or bobs it's really hard to get the foils kind of packed in here and you get overwhelmed so you skip that section so I wanted to show you guys exactly how I do a full highlight on somebody who has really short hair and how to get in all the brightness underneath here so that it looks really good your clients are happy and to make it a little bit easier on you. So let's get started. All right, so this is our before, and you guys can see we haven't done a full on her in a while. I've thrown in a couple highlights, but it's really dark underneath here. And so I'm gonna tackle all of this under here and definitely tackle the root area as well. But this is gonna be just a really great way to do short hair and to get in all of these little short hairs under here. All right, so I'm gonna mix up her lightener and I'm gonna start with just 20 volume. So I'm gonna do just like a little bit less than like a full scoop here. Um, and I'm gonna start with 20 volume and then we'll slowly increase up to 25 as we get to the front. But because I'm doing a full, I wanna make sure that I'm not over processing that underneath hair. She's not super dark, so we don't need to go anything higher than 20 volume. And I'll also add in a little bit of Olaplex also, uh, just because we are doing a full and you guys know me, I love my Olaplex. All right, so for her low light, I'm actually gonna be mixing up 15 volume. And I actually get a lot of questions about how to make 15 volume. You just do equal parts of 10 and 20 volume. And so I'm doing equal parts of our developer, 10 and 20 volume, and then I'm gonna do equal parts developer to color. So I'm gonna do 8A and 8N in our Kenra permanent here. 8A. And with Kenra color, if you guys have ever used it, I personally like to mix it with a whisk. Um, it's a little bit thicker of a color, so in order to get it mixed up really good, I like to use a whisk um, to just make sure that it ensures that it's mixed up really smoothly. All right, so what I did was I clipped up everything pretty much um, on top of her ear up. And I actually like these little clips. These are from From uh, with two M's and they actually have a little bit of like rubber in there so they keep the hair uh, really nice and tight in there but not pull the hair. So I really like these clips, I just got them um, and they're really, really great. You can get them from that brand. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do a diagonal back section right here, um, just around her hairline. And you guys can see we've got a lot of little baby hairs in here and that's again why I like these clips because they really kind of grab a lot of those baby hairs. But I'm gonna grab our baby hair section or our little tiny section here and I'm going to do our first weave. Now, I'm not too concerned about getting all of these little baby hairs highlighted because she's not gonna wear her hair up. However, we do wanna make sure that there still is blonde in there because if she does see her hair and there's a lot of depth in here, she might think, oh my gosh, my hair's really dark. So we have to think about, the clients are gonna see this from this perspective, and if they see a lot of depth, or if they do wear their hair up and there's no blonde underneath here, um, they might feel like, oh my gosh, my hairdresser's not getting my hair blonde enough. So definitely something to consider um, when you are highlighting this area. So I'm gonna take my little, it's almost like a baby light, right? It doesn't need to be crazy thick. We will leave some of those hairs out. And I'm gonna take my foil. Now this is just a regular uh, hair foil. I like these a little bit better than even my Framar foils that I typically use because I feel like they lock the hair in just a slightly bit better. Um, so what I'm gonna do, you guys can see I've got my back of my hand here and I'm just grabbing in these little baby hairs and making sure that they're locked in really, really good with our lightener up in here. Now I'm not gonna go all the way to the end on some of these pieces because there are there is some blonde in there already, but I do wanna make sure that I'm getting in all these little pieces. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my foil, fold it in half, lock that into place right there, and then we'll fold it in again into quarters and really secure that just by tipping off this edge here. And we'll do that with our next section. Same thing, a diagonal back. And this is gonna help really make sure that you don't have a lot of lines in your hair. Um, if you were to do it straight across, you might get kind of a lot more like line look. And so doing diagonal backs really help you not to get that. And one thing you can do is you can have your clients tilt their head a little bit. Sometimes this does help. 
Um, and what a, a word that you can say to them is you can say, have your ear touch your shoulder or get your ear towards your shoulder. And that is a good way to direct your clients. You guys can see it's a little bit easier when I'm down here in this corner to just get in here, especially behind this ear section. So that's a really great tip for those of you guys who struggle with this angle. But again, you guys can see how locked in my foils are. I can move away my hands and I don't have to worry about it. So again, just making sure that you're getting them really locked in there helps a ton. And I'm gonna keep doing some diagonal backs and I am gonna come back in and kind of tackle this little section here with probably a straight across foil, but I still wanna keep doing my diagonal backs here. So I'm actually gonna do a low light for this one. You guys can see I'd actually previously done a low light here. I don't want her to be platinum blonde underneath here. We still wanna have some dimension in there. So this piece I'll take a little bit thicker because it is gonna be um, a low light versus a highlight. And I'm gonna keep continuing up. We'll probably do about five of these diagonal back uh, foils towards the center. She has a little bit wider of a hairline. Some clients only need about three diagonal backs. So that's always totally gonna to depend on you and uh, you know your client. So um, that's just one thing that there's never an exact answer to how I do my foils. Like it's always three or it's always five. It'll always um, adjust based off the client's hairline and their density. All right, and I'm gonna do one more and then we're gonna switch to the other side. All right, so now we started on the other side and I will say something that usually the very first foil, because we have this pesky ear here, that is usually the hardest foil in this section, even with having your client kind of tilt their head and all that stuff. So just be aware that sometimes when you're first starting and you're first trying this out, that this foil might be a little bit awkward or hard to get used to doing, don't get discouraged. Just try a thinner section and just keep doing it because I promise you it will get easier, but it is a little funky, especially when you're first kind of starting out. So I just wanted to mention that because I think a lot of times we watch other people on Instagram and we think, oh my gosh, like they are amazing and why can't I get that? And a lot of times it's just comes over time, but a lot of times it is awkward and we just don't get to necessarily see that awkward section for them. So um, definitely something to keep in mind. Now, you guys can see previously I had done a low light here, but I actually want to mimic the other side. We had done two highlights uh, to one low light. So I'm going to do a highlight here and just highlight over this. And the cool thing is because previously on her for her low lights, we had just done 15 volumes. So it's going to lift out pretty easily and uh, not look anything weird. So. Uh, just let you know that sometimes I do change up my patterns of what I do and that kind of just goes off my mood or based off like what the client wants if she wanted to be a little blonder or darker or whatever. So now this one will actually be a little light. We'll take a thinner section there. All right, so I did all of my diagonal backs and what I decided to do was I clipped up the main section because I think a lot of times when we're under here, it can get really messy and we get really over freaked out by it, right? So what I decided to do was I just clip this up out of the way, take it simple. And a lot of times when it feels overwhelming, just do it section by section, get things out of the way. It'll be a lot less overwhelming. So what I also did was I folded up all the corners of my foils so that I could actually see this hair down here. I want to make sure that I'm adding lightness and you guys can see at this point, she's got no lightness in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go straight across here and I'm just going to tackle this little tiny section down here. Now I don't need to get it all the way down to the bottom because we are going to cut her hair and you're barely going to see that. But for me, I do want to just get a tiny bit of lightness in here. And this is just me going above and beyond. This is my mom, so I can. Uh, do you need to do this for every single client? Not necessarily, but this is what I would do if you do want to make sure you get in all these pieces. So I'm just going to take a tiny little uh, foil here. And again, I'm not going to go all the way down to that bottom hairline. Uh, weave out a few pieces in there. And just do a tiny little foil down here. Now, I'm doing a full size foil. You could do a half size foil if you wanted to, if that felt better. Um, I don't want it to slip out, so that's why I'm doing a full size foil here. Um, but I'm just going all the way up to kind of that root area. And then we're gonna fold this up. And so, like I said, a lot of times we overcomplicate things or we get stressed out that, oh my gosh, I can't see the section anymore. And we either ignore it or we just try to do it sloppy. 
and that's not the answer. You definitely want to take your time and just clip away the hair and think section by section by section. What do I need to do for this section? So I'll take my next little foil here. You guys can see there's a tiny bit of lightness in there, not much. Getting up in there. And you guys can see I'm kind of folding these in so that they're a little bit smaller and I can compress my foils. So I'll be able to bring these back down. We'll do one last one. These can all come down at this point. We'll do one last one up here. And you guys will see, I'm, I'm leaving dimension out in there. I don't, again, want her to be platinum blonde in there. That's not the goal. Just to give her a little bit more dimension underneath. And I'll just leave that foil there. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just keep working up the head. Again, I'm not going super, uh, I'll leave a little bit of hair out in between. I'm not going super, super fine in here. Um, for those clients that are maybe wanting to be platinum blonde, I probably wouldn't take this thick of a section um, or even do low lights on them. But again, every client's different and they all need custom things. So this is gonna be a low light because that's what I've done before. And I'm just gonna keep working up the head until I get kind of just past this um, kind of mid occipital bone here. And then we're gonna go and do the way that I do my normal partial highlight. Alright, so I finished all the way straight up. Now there are sometimes these little areas right in here where you're like, oh, I'm not really catching it in this foil and you don't want to extend it or you don't want to over direct it. So we will tackle these when we do our sides. Um, you could do a wider foil. I personally don't like to do that. So we will tackle these little corners when we get to the sides. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this entire section. You guys can see I like to use my clips here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to kind of have her hair bring her down a little bit and I'm going to just section her out kind of right at where that apex is and I will find it. I usually like to start with a low light so that's kind of my pattern that I normally do. You can see there was a low light there and we'll clip this away and if you guys have seen any of my other foil videos you know that I foil backwards. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take kind of our mohawk section. Again I don't section things out but I'm going to imagine we're gonna take our mohawk section and meet it down here with this foil. So we're gonna do this little section here. Now I'm still using a 20 volume, I haven't switched, but when we go towards the front, we'll switch into 25 volume. So we're gonna start here with the low light, because you guys can see I had done that previously. And what I like to do is I take my foil, I lock it into place, and I foil backwards. section out and I just keep working my way down this little mohawk section until I again meet up with that section that I was at already. So I'm gonna do one last foil down here. You guys can see I kind of just bridged the gap with that piece. I'll do a low light here. And now once I've gotten to this point where I've met my foils down here, I'm going to now bring all these foils down. So I like to just kind of take my uh, rat tail or I guess whatever you call it, the pin of the comb, and I just kind of put it in there and kind of fold these down. And we work our way all the way up to the top. All right, so what I've done, I did a few foils just so it's a little bit easier for you guys to see, but basically I met up with my section that I had back there. I did a few foils forward, and all I'm doing is I'm doing the exact same thing that I did in the back. I'm just literally foiling backwards. So I weave my little section here. This one's actually gonna be a low light because that's what we did last time. I lock my foil into place, and you guys can see I've got a lot of firm tension here to keep it really nice and tight. And then I go through and just apply either the color or the lightener. Now, the reason why I foil backwards, I've got a lot of questions about this, is I feel like I'm actually able to get in just a little bit tighter than if I was placing the foil the other way. And for me, it's a little bit more comfortable to kind of stand over my client and apply the color this way. So 
this is just a personal preference. It's honestly something that I learned really early on in my career and it's how I learned how to foil. And I love it. So I definitely recommend trying it. Um, it's a little weird at first, especially if you're used to foiling the other way. But once you kind of get used to it, it's a really great way to foil. And like I said, I feel like you're just really able to get in there really nice and clean. And it's just keeping everything kind of in the direction of how it would lay. So definitely recommend trying it out. So what I'm gonna keep doing is I'm just gonna keep moving all the way forward, all the way down this mohawk until we get to the front. All right, so we finished her entire mohawk section. I actually did her other side just to make it a little bit quicker for you guys. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go in and do these little baby hair sections. Um, a lot of times clients have these little baby hairs and they don't get highlighted. So I personally like to pay really close attention to them. You can do a full size foil or you can tear this foil in half and get in here. Uh, but I'm just gonna go through and just kind of lighten these just ever so slightly. And then I'm gonna do diagonal backs around the hairline. And we're literally gonna go all the way back up into this corner. And again, catch that little corner I was talking about earlier. And I'm just gonna take a little section like this, a little bit thicker there. And at this point, I'm just using metal clips because I don't want it to pull on any of her baby hairs on accident. And one thing I will mention is those clips that I was showing you guys in the beginning, one of them broke while we were filming this. So take that for what it is. I don't know if they're great clips. Um, I haven't had a break before, but just wanted to let you guys know that if I was telling you about something and it broke, then I would let you know and you can use your own judgment if you want to go by those clips. So buy at your own risk. Um, anyways, so I'm just going through and just doing kind of baby lights right around our hairline. We're gonna do two highlights, probably to one low light, same thing going through here. And you guys will see, I'm just gonna keep continuing back all the way up until I hit that corner. So I'm gonna do this, I'll let you guys watch along. area um, and you guys can see now we've literally covered every single hair on the head um, or every single area and it's great I love this sectioning it works really well for me and it pretty much works for every single client occasionally somebody again who has like a little bit wider of a head you got to do a few more baby foils kind of up in the front but for the most part this sectioning works really well and it allows you to do it methodically so just as a reminder we did our mohawk section all the way down we did diagonal backs up the back mohawk section all the way we did our two little corners here and then just diagonal back up into this corner we did 20 in the back um, all the way up until that uh, occipital or where i met at the apex and then everything else was 25 volume and then we did our low lights about two to one so we're gonna let her process and uh, we'll show you guys what it looks like all right so she is ready to rinse and i want to see show you guys what she lifted to so this is about where she lifted to and to me that's ready to go we still have a little bit of warmth in there it's not white but it's kind of like inside of the banana and it looks perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to um, pull out from the bottom, starting back here, and then we'll just kind of go from there. you guys can see all the beautiful blended different colors in there how much brighter we got and it doesn't look chunky that's one thing that is really cool it doesn't look like there's a ton of lines in her hair it still looks really chunky really nice and just really blended lots of dimension in there matching her natural color in there and so definitely recommend trying out this technique especially if you have those shorter hair clients and struggle with getting in that really blended foil look. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed watching that video. I love seeing step-by-step -step things. I know a lot of you guys have asked for a little bit more in-depth videos, so I hope that that one was perfect for you. And again, if you wanna see how I did my mom's hair in another video with her formula, 
Obviously I shared it here, but I go a little bit more in depth in that video. You can check that out down here below. As always, if you haven't already come over to Instagram and said hello, please come over, say hi, send me a DM, let me know that you watch this video, and let me know what you think. And especially if this is your first time watching one of my videos, I would love to connect with you. Lastly, if you haven't already hit the subscribe button, make sure to do that right now, and turn on the little bell for notifications because I post videos every single week, and I wanna make sure that you don't miss out on any of them. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.